the tally man. Andrew Ferguson, you have pled guilty to a charge that you did on the public footpath outside licensed premises known as the Turkish Raven in King Street, Glasgow, present a loaded revolver at John Laverick. Discharge the said revolver, fatally wound the said Laverick, and did thus murder him. Yes, my lord. You have chosen that nothing should be said on your behalf. The willful and deliberate taking of human life must bring its full punishment, and the duty of this court is clear. I sentence you to imprisonment for life. Thank you, my lord. The court is adjourned. Court, all right. Enter. The Lord. Ah, come in, Chief Superintendent. Uh, you too, Chief Inspector. Sir, thank you, sir. Ah, sit down, both of you. Sir, sir. Now, I want to talk about this man, Fergan. Well, I think... For the moment, Chief Superintendent Ilford, I prefer to perform that exercise myself. Hmm. Ah, I've seen your Chief Inspector on occasion, but only in the witness box. Uh, sorry, this is uh, Detective Chief Inspector Colin Thane in charge of Millside Division. It's a pleasure to meet you, Lord Mains. Might be wise to decide on that later, Chief Inspector. Still, for the moment, I have removed my robes and wig. Ilford, I'm not addressing you in your capacity as head of this city's CID force, nor you, Thane, as the man in charge of the division in which this murder was committed. You uh, understand? Well... Uh... Uh, yes, my lord. Meaning you don't. Ilford, I seem to remember you smoke a pipe, and unfortunately I've left my own tobacco at home. Uh, here's my pouch. You're welcome to try it. Ah, though. thank you. Yeah, yes, that should do. Now, uh, while I fill this pipe, let me say that um, I've already told the advocate deputy that in terms of law... I have no criticism to make of the conduct of the case or the police information as presented. That's something. Hmm. Now, let's try this tobacco. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, reasonable, reasonable. Yeah. In terms of law, as I said, no criticism. On the other hand, in my opinion, in my non-judicial opinion... The situation is a damnable disgrace. Yes, my lord. Uh, Chief it... Inspector Thane, do you challenge that view? No, sir. I can't. Now, oh, good. When one spends one's life hearing evidence allegedly given under oath, actual honesty becomes a rare and valued commodity. Now, I have the case papers here. Andrew Fergan is, or was, an insurance clerk, married, two children. He... Uh, experimented in petty embezzlement from his firm and had to replace the money quickly. As a result, he borrowed 100 pounds from an unlicensed moneylender. Yeah, we call them tally men, my lord, because they keep tally on what's owed and the interest. Yeah, quite. The interest rates, I gather, are unusually well commensurate to risk. 20 to 25 percent per week. The clients have no alternative. They're poor risks. No one else would touch them. And repayment, I understand, is rigorously enforced. Fall behind and the heavies move in to jog your memory, my lord. And if, like the unfortunate Fergan, you still can't pay, what then? The Taliban fixes a lower weekly figure, but the interest keeps mounting. Forever. Yes. According to the court reports, uh, the murdered man Laverick was a Taliban. Well, I'd say a hired help. He was outside that bar to collect payments. Yet no note of payments made. Very little money was found on the body. Mm. Odd. Well, they work in pairs. There's always a minder in the background. A minder? Oh, I see. In case of trouble. Or in case the Taliban might be tempted to be unfaithful to his master. Maybe both, sir. Uh, maybe. Thane, I have just sentenced a man to life imprisonment because he exterminated a parasite. A 25% per week parasite. A parasite who apparently was only an agent for a much larger parasite. But Lord May... Are I... you seeking sympathy? No. Look, sir, we tried damn hard to find Laverick's minder and the boss behind him. You think we just sat on it on a back Hey, that's enough. 
I'm sorry. Lord Maines, maybe it's better if I answer for my officers. Of course. Hmm. Ah, good tobacco, this. Doesn't become too uh, heated. Yes, well, uh, I like it that way. <sighs> Tally, men. Hmm. Yeah, we mop up a few now and again. If we're lucky, we know them as unlicensed moneylenders. They're fined, and they go off laughing. Hmm. Customers are too scared to talk about what really happens. But you know these men. Yes, we do. Except a new teleman seems to have arrived on the scene lately. A king-sized version. Running a big operation. So far, we can't get a lead on him. I see. Then <clears throat> you'll learn as you get older that irritation is not necessarily condemnation. Sir? Just as I've learned, it uh, sometimes helps to think aloud. Uh, yes, sir. Until not very long ago, Scotland had a particularly civilized outlook towards any individual charged with murder. No plea of guilty was allowed. The charge had to be proved by proper presentation of evidence to a jury. And today, today, I had to sit silent while that wretch Fergan pled guilty. I, I was left as a rubber stamp, passing the only sentence prescribed by law. However, life imprisonment is a flexible phrase. Recently, the Crown authorities were naive enough to release a particularly vicious thug after mere nine years. I have um, transmitted my view that, on this basis, Fergan's term should be no more than five years. He's not to be told of this. Nor, pending the possibility of an appeal, is he to be approached in any way. Five years. That helps. Uh, so to several consciences. My uh, second thought is that uh, it would be grossly wrong for one of Her Majesty's judges to advise the police of this city. Uh, agreed, my lord. But uh, I imagine a considerable effort will be concentrated on this uh, particular Taliban, with much more in mind than a mere appearance at some lower court. In turn, if such an individual came before me and... If a jury, in its wisdom, found him guilty, well, I don't propose to say any more. No, I, I don't think there's need, my lord. Good. Now, I have another case waiting. Thank you, gentlemen. No side CID, Detective Constable B. Yeah. Yes, sir, sir. Afternoon, sir. Still yeah, snowing outside? Getting worse, Mac. The main street's only fit for polar bears. Oh, I'm glad I'm not still out in a beak. Where's Inspector Moss? Oh, well, you've tried to try uh, again. D.I. Moss is in your office, sir, fixing the crime map. Again? He never gives up. Right, thanks, pal. Nothing for Sergeant McLeod. I heard. Did that jewelry store break in last night, sir? Anything else happening, Mac? No, I just run out of the mill stuff, sir. We'll try and keep it that way. Beach? Sir? Find some tea, will you? Myself and Inspector Moss. Right, sir. Weak for Inspector Moss. As always. Which is also happy. Hello, Phil. Oh, call. Come on, right. I'll just... Oh, for God's sake, take those mark up in that your mouth, will you? <coughs> Look, swallow them and we'll have a hell of a job getting more without a requisition. I wouldn't have to risk it if you'd do your own damned office work. Divisional crime maps. Invented by someone with nothing better to do. And the headquarters requests them as well. Monthly statistics. Well, they can wait. Oh, let me sit down. Oh. Felgen got life. I heard. Poor basket. The Lord Main's thought. Buddha Ilford and I got a private roasting afterwards. His lordship wants the tallyman found or else. <laughs> that would please Ilford. Oh, I well, don't sound so happy about it. We got the job. Ah. Huh? Belford. Is the boss. Top priority. High court judges worry him. Well, well, they worry most people. A tally man was left to try. Well, we can't go near Fergan. There's a ban on it. We know his story anyway. However, I did have a notion. Come in. Tea, sir. Ah. Uh, Rose, thanks. Weak for you, Inspector Mark. I'm weak. I've seen stronger tap water still, as long as it's wet. Thanks. Go oh, beach. Sir. Make sure headquarters get a list of what was lost in the jewelry story. Yes, sir. I want it circulated as soon as possible. Yes, sir. All right, Beach. 
stuff. How about the Charlie man? Mm. You said you had a notion. Well, there were some press photographers outside the court. I asked one to take some extra pictures, you know, where people are left after Fergan's case was over. And that was a familiar face. Uh -huh. Yes, it's worth trying. No, oh, this tea's pretty grim. It's good for your officer. A fag. Hey, no, I've got my own. Oh, no, oh, no, not those again. Herbal mixture. They stimulate my stomach juices. Well, they kill off mine. Here, have a light. Ta. Andrew Fergan. His trouble was horses, right? Mm-hmm. So he bought it a hundred pounds and things got rough. At 25% per week. In three months, he owed the Tallyman 500. Yeah, then when things got bad, he shot Laverick at the collecting point. Then tried to shoot himself, but the gun jammed. Ah, some people lose all along. Now, how did he contact the Tallyman again? He didn't. Someone phoned Fergan, said if he needed a loan, they could put him in touch. Oh. So he met John Laverick and got the cash. <laughs> Plenty of people knew Fergan was getting desperate. Ah, uh, that seems to be how the Tallyman operates. He hears about a prospect. Makes the approach, but always through a leg, man. No direct contact. Yeah. Uh, Phil. What? Have there been any outside calls for me? Oh, well, not at all, but why? Oh, I just wondered. Uh, I want to take some time off tomorrow morning, personal. Well, you're the boss here. Ah, yes, but if Buddha Ilford oh, had... Oh, look that daft. You're out on inquiries. <laughs> Thanks. It, uh, it might be an idea to get Sergeant McLeod over to that pub where John Lavick was shot. Just a oh. chat around yeah. now the case is over. Right. Mac holds his beard better than most. What about you? Home first for some food. And then I'll see a couple of people. Look, if those press pictures arrive, I'll be back home again about uh, ten. You can bring them out. But do I get fed? Well, as long as you don't bring those herbal smudge pots. <laughs> they stink. Oh. They really do. Right, come in. Oh, something smells good. Oh, it's stew. What's left of it? The kids have theirs early. Ah. Hey, stop that. Well, if a man can't kiss his Don't wife. Don't have both hands full of dishes. Point taken. <laughs> Where are the kids, anyway? Well, Tommy's at his cub stunts, and, and Kate's gone to watch TV at the Randolphs. What's wrong with our TV? The Randolphs have colour. Oh. Well, that stew smells good. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil might look in later tonight sometime. Oh, good. Mary, mm -hmm. look, uh, sit down a minute, will you? Yes, but the stew... Oh, forget the stew. <sighs> Mary, I got a letter this morning. If it's another bill, then... Look, read it, will you? All right, then. Just wait a minute till I put this stuff down. Well? Here. Oh, thanks. Bank of Central Scotland. Oh, I haven't an account there. Just read it. All right. Dear Mr. Finn, further to our earlier conversations, we are now in a... Colin! Read it, all of it. Executive Security offers a £5,000 a year annual bonus five-day week... Weekends our own and no night shift. Oh. What do you think? It's wonderful. I had a couple of feelers from them a week ago. It was uh, hazy then, but, well... This is firm enough. Do you want to do it? Swap thief catching for a cushy number with that kind of money. I'd even rate the executive dining room. Well, when are you going to see them? Tomorrow. Does Phil know? Not yet. Mary, what's the matter? Don't you like the idea? Oh, it's like a dream come true. Any cop's wife would feel that way. Well, then. Would you be happy doing it? What do you think? Now, tomorrow, your good suit needs pressing. Now, now I'll do that tonight. And All I, right. I... Something's burning. Oh, the stew. Oh. oh it's cremating. Oh, look at the stuff. If I'd known when you'd be home, it would be... Bankers so... are nine to five. Yes, but I know, but Millie, you... what's wrong? Oh, I'm happy for you, you idiot. Oh, come on, have your meal, or what's left of it. <laughs> All right. I've got to go out for a spell anyway. I'm still a cop. That's what I mean, Colin. And it's what you want that matters. Now, that's the place, sir. Uh-huh. Complete with neon sign. 
Grab Hayes' loans by arrangement. Well, at least the snow stopped. For a spell. Right, Erickson, keep an ear on the radio. This won't take long. Right, sir. Nice little place you've got here, Mr. Hayes. Small talk I can do without. Well? Do I sit down? Suit yourself, no charge. Andrew Fergan got life today. It was on the radio, and I told you all I knew last time. Well, now I'm tidying up. Who says I need tidying? Now, wait a minute. If it's anything to do with my money lending license... It isn't. Nobody likes a money lender, okay. But I ran a straight business. Signed agreements, low fixed rate interest, all square. I'll wait for you later, Mr. Hayes. But Fergan came here wanting a loan. And I chased him. He was trouble. When I take on a client, because I'm pretty sure I'll get my money back. I'd never suggest you were a charity. But what happens if a problem turns up if you can't get your money back? I call in a collection agency. They use persuasion. Non-physical. Or a court order and try to get the cash back by installment. Any particular agency, Mr. Hay? I use the Barber Debt Recovery Bunch. I've heard of them. You should. They're mostly ex-cops. And it's a strictly legit operation like mine. Going back to Fergan, how often do you turn down clients? Daily. You ever hear what happens to the people you turn down? Sometimes I hear... Wait a minute. Tidying up, you said. Yeah. What you're really asking is if any of them get involved with the tally man, right? Maybe. Well, if they do, I'm sorry for them. The word is, he plays rough whoever he is. Mr. Hayes, I want a list of people you've turned down lately. <laughs> You're not on, Chief Inspector. I guarantee secrecy. Hayes, I could get a warrant to go through your file. Go ahead. My reject file's here in my head. Nowhere else. And I'm not getting involved with the tallyman. Meaning you're scared? That's an understatement. All right. I won't push it for now. But I'll be back. Any time, Chief Inspector. Just don't expect any change. I'll see you out. Hayes, in my book, tally men are scum. You're wasting your time. I'll give you a tip. You won't find anyone who'll talk. Meaning? Meaning good night. Uh, any luck, sir? He was scared. Ah, uh, the snow's back on. I noticed. Right, Erickson. Next stop, the Lombok Gambling Club. That's up. Monday night. Harry Freeman, the bookies there on Mondays. He's a bit of a character, isn't he, sir? Yeah, he is. And he doesn't scare easily. You can drop me off somewhere near the club and then wait. We'll do this quietly. Hello, Harry. Oh, hello. How's it going? <laughs> Not good. So far, I've saved myself 400 quid. <laughs> Still gambling with that money. Ah, I enjoy watching. And the mental arithmetic, you know. Buy your drink, Colin. Uh, maybe later. Can you spit a minute, Harry? Sure. Let's shade away from this mob. Well? I have a problem. A married man. <laughs> Uh, this one's called the Tally Man. You pick them, don't you? The Fergan business. Something like that. Uh, Colin, I, I told you what happened with me. Andrew Fergan placed a few bets. Well, shot. When he lost, then I stopped his credit. <laughs> he hit some bookies a lot worse. He tried to collect. Yes, but I'm no backstreet heavy. Well, that's why I'm here. Well, thanks for that much. This place is busy tonight. Some people have money to burn. Not all of them. Table four. Mm -hmm. A boy, early twenties, short fair hair. You see him? A quietly dressed one. Well? Yeah. Strung up to busting point. Ah, and he's lost again. And that's life, laddie. He'll learn. You know him? Oh, just a face. He's been here before. But you'd be more interested in the back of that table left, on your left. Uh, gently, man. See anyone you know? 
Herb Cullen. Ah, a scar and a cheroot. He did a five stretch for armed robbery. You've some nice members. Uh, later, Colin, we've come here. <laughs> oh, hello, Josh. Helen, good to see you. How's the horse business, Harry? It's a living. You look well in it. Yeah. And you're still keeping bad company? Oh. <laughs> He'll do till something better comes along. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> uh, meet an old school pal of mine, Colin Thane. He's a cop. Uh, Colin, this is Helen. Helen Milne, my favorite blonde. Hello. And Josh Barber. Hello. Uh, Chief Inspector Thane, isn't it? That's right. Business or pleasure, Chief Inspector? Uh, being yeah. here, I mean. He lets me buy him a drink now and again. <laughs> uh, be polite, Colin. Josh Barber might offer you a job in your daughter. <laughs> Well, I have a few ex policemen with my payroll, that's true. Barber, the mm. collection agent. Yes. yes, I've heard of it. <laughs> now it's my turn, Mr. Barber. Business or pleasure? 50 50 as far as this place is concerned. I've uh, started a new operation, a bonded security service. The club has signed on, but uh, I've other ideas. So have I, like having a drink. Join us, Chief Inspector? Uh, not now, thanks. Harry? Uh, maybe later, George. Was... See you then. Bye, Chief Inspector. Goodbye. Uh, Seven. Who's the girl, honey? Oh, her father's a heart specialist. I've known him for as well. Good looking. And Barber? <laughs> Rags to riches. He's moving up. Fast car stuff in the flat in the West End. Yeah, fag? Uh, no, I packed him in. Yeah, I keep saying I will. Oh, well. We, uh, we were talking about someone else. I can tell you the tally man's no miss. What else? <laughs> Just gossip, Colin. Something I heard. But maybe he doesn't always need payment in cash. Spell it out, Harry. Well, I don't know that I can, except that there might be a kind of, well, services rendered arrangement sometimes inside help on, well, different things. Like robbery? Look, I only got a hint. Just what are you after, Colin? Anything. But from you, Harry, some names... People on the bookie blacklist. Punters who run out of credit in a big way. And I'll forget who told me. For you, I'll do it. Anything else? Well, that depends on you. You're the same old arm-twisting basket, aren't you? Well, let's say I'll listen around. Do you ever get tired of being a cop? You know, it's funny you should say that. Hey, hey. Hey. What? Time you were going. A scar on the cheroot. Colin? Uh, he's leaving. You know... Somebody somewhere told me Cullen did time with the late unlamented Laverick and knew him pretty well. Well enough to be his minder. That I wouldn't know. Would I? Hey, over here, sir. See anyone leave the club just now, Erickson? Uh, yes, sir. Uh... Youngster, about a minute ago, and then another character soon afterwards. Damn the snow, it's getting worse. Where did they go? Well, the youngster turned down that side street. I think the other fellow went that way too, sir. Well, let's take a walk and see. All right, right, sir. I think that... In there, sir. The side street. I have. Come on. Right. Along there, sir. Where that dustbin's fall. Hey! Hey, you, stay where you are. He's running. Now get him. All right, right, sir. Hey, come back, son! Now, what are we here, eh? Oh. You're the kid who was in the Lombok Club, aren't you? Uh, I... Look, uh, uh, take it easy, laddie. Eh? Who roughed you up? I don't know. It happened too fast. Yeah, well, it looks like he hit you with more than a snowball. Now, you stay here, all right? I'll be back in a minute. And we'll get you fixed up. Erickson! Erickson! Coming, sir. I lost him, sir. Sorry. Oh, well. Easy enough on a night like this. The fellow he jumped is back here. Well, the youngster? Ah, that's right. He's the... Uh... Yeah! So? But he's gone. Now we've pretty well lost both of them. Is it nearly fixed, Uncle Phil? Uh, uh... How does that stew there, sir? Uh, oh, God, hell. Is that blood, Uncle Phil? Ah, we bet. Oh, well, don't spill any on my airplane, then. It's messy. Having fun, Phil. 
I cut myself with this knife. I'm bleeding to death and your son worries about the mess. Here's the screwdriver, Uncle Phil. All right. No. Ah. Ah, that's it. All set to fly again. Oh, thanks, Uncle Phil. Where's your mother, Tommy? In the kitchen, Dad. Kate's still at the Randalls. Yeah, colour television, I know. Well, just get used to being underprivileged and tell your mum I'm back. No <laughs> need. I heard the door. Coffee and sandwiches, Phil. Oh, great. Well, I'll take that tray, man. Oh, I'll probably thanks. scoff a lot. Here, Phil, have you been smoking those ruddy camel dung oh, pies again? Colin, what's camel dung done? Uh, 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 you bet. You should have been there long ago. Oh, but Dad... Now, come on. There's a glass of milk in the kitchen. Come All on. right. Night, Uncle Fred. Night, Tommy. See you. Good night, son. Night, Dad. I'll just go with him, Colin. Y- you've things to talk about with Phil, haven't you? Yes. Hmm? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Good. Now, come on, young man. Did you see Uncle Phil's finger there, Mum? Things they talk about. What things? The, uh... The tally man, Joe. Oh. Look, help yourself to coffee and sandwiches, will you? Ah, well... Oh, here, I've got those, say, uh, press photographs from outside the court. Good, good. Any faces we know? Ah, a few, like you'd expect. Hey. These sandwiches are good. <laughs> Starving multitudes fed daily. Yeah, go on. Oh, well, take a look at this one. Recognize him? I uh, should. I saw him tonight. Herb Cullen, as nasty as they come. And the character at his elbow is Truck Harris. Now, he's on file for armed robbery. Uh, He usually doubles as a driver and spare muscle. Interesting. Where did you see Colin? In a gambling club. And one of the punters was beaten up outside. By Colin? I couldn't prove it. What do we do now? Well, leave it till the morning and then pick up Colin. Any excuse you can think of. But uh, keep it well clear of the tally man business. Easy. Well, his pal, Harris... I'll find out what you can, but no direct contact. I don't want to scare anyone. Hmm. Oh, and another thing, Phil. Remember, I'll be in late. Uh, there's uh, nothing wrong, is there? Hmm. Personal, I mean. No, 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 no. Just something that turned up. But I'm going to have an early night. <laughs> oh, I can take a hint. <laughs> you may have to take another savage with me. Help yourself. Right. Well, I'll get in my way. Good luck with... Um... Whatever it is. Thanks, I'll need it. Oh, Phil. What? Uh, nothing that'll keep. Good night, Ed. Good night. Good night, Mary. Good night, Phil. <sighs> hmm. Phil's off early. Yes, he uh, he wanted an early night. Hmm. What did you think about the bank job? I didn't tell him. Why not? Well, I thought I'd wait till after the interview. I mean... It's not final yet, Mary. No. No, it's not. Well, make sure your shoes have a good polish for the morning, Colin. Hmm? Appearances matter with that. Morning, sir. Can I help you? Yes, my name's Thane. I have an appointment with Mr. Patterson Dyer. Oh, the general manager. One moment, sir. Yes, he is expecting you. If you'll just come with me. Thanks. It's quite a place. <laughs> well, this is our head office, sir. And the branch has assets of, uh, oh, I think it's 37 million pounds now, though. <laughs> I haven't personally counted it. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Here we are, sir. Come. Mr. Fane, sir. Ah, oh, come in, Fane. Thank you, Stavis. <clears throat> A pleasure to meet you, Chief Inspector. I'm Dial, Patterson Dial. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Cigarette? Uh, Yes, thanks. And uh, a light. Thank you. Weather still as bad as ever, eh? Cold enough for penguins. (laughs) Quite. Well, I'll get to the point. Were you surprised by our letter? That's putting it mildly. Well, it's normal banking practice to make... uh, discreet inquiries before coming to decisions. We know quite a lot about you. I see. Appointing an executive security officer is a new departure for this bank, uh, a board-level decision. Does the post interest you? What's involved? Good question. Mainly, you'd be our security consultant. We've about a hundred branches, town and country. Some could be robbed by an intelligent five-year-old. Changing that would be your first task. 
Uh, afterwards, well, you'd have senior executive status and a free hand in security matters. How free? Very free. Subject only to board approval. Mm. Well, why this all of a sudden? Our sister bank in England lost a lot of money in two daylight raids. That brought uh, certain members of our board out of a deep sleep. Come. I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Harris needs your signature on it. Uh, all right, Benison. Let's see it. Sir. What on earth happened to your face? Well, I slipped and fell in the ice last night, sir. Just outside my house. Hmm. Easy enough in this weather. Excuse me a moment, Fane. Yes. <laughs> you caught quite a crack. Where do you live, the North Pole? West Park. But there's not much difference right now, sir. West Park? Where exactly? Garrison Street. Yes, I know it. Well, it seems all right. There you are, Madison. Oh, thank you, sir. And be more careful. Yes, sir, I will. Now then. What's his job? A clerk in the foreign department. He's quite a bright lad. Been with you long? About four years. We brought him into head office just after he got married. Marriage is good in a banking career. Steadies a man. Anchors him. Quite. Mm. Now, uh, suppose I get someone to show you around. Then uh, you'll want a little time to consider, of course. Uh, suppose we have your answer two days from now, on Thursday. That's fair. Good. I'll get hold of someone... You'll find it interesting, Chief Inspector, I'm sure of that. Well, that's the guided tour, Mr. Thane. From vaults to attic, thanks very much. Did you see all you wanted? Uh, Mr. Dial said... All I wanted, Mr. Todd. thanks again. A pleasure. Goodbye, Mr. Thane. Goodbye. Hey, oh, watch where you're going. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> it's you, Mr. Thane. Johnny McBain. I haven't seen you since I retired as a sergeant. <laughs> how's the uh, how's Millside Division, sir? Oh, surviving. Here, what's this fancy uniform? <laughs> it's a security outfit. I'm on cash escort today. Here's the boss coming. Uh, things too quiet for you over in Millside, Chief Inspector. Good morning, Mr. Barber. Eh? Well, even a cop has to visit a bank manager sometimes. Oh, then I hope he was kind. Uh, move that bag in, Donny. I'll bring the rest. Uh, right, Mr. Barber. Cash delivery? Uh -huh. Aye. That's a security truck outside, uh -huh. except with people of six who Donnie and I had to double up. You've been kept busy then. Uh, people want security, we supply it. If ever you think of packing in the place. I'll uh, try to remember. Ah, I'm only joking. You know, I once wanted to be a cop, but uh, I failed the medical. Some people would rate that an escape. <laughs> Aye, maybe. Well, well, I'd better get this cash in. Uh, look round at my office sometime, you can see my set. Thanks. Maybe I will. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Thien. You enjoying the job, Donny? Oh, it's no bad. Mr. Barber wanted me on the debt collecting side, but oh, no, no for me. Barber? Oh, the money's good. <laughs> that, that's what matters, eh? Ah, uh, usually. Well, it's time I was getting back, Donny. See you. Uh, see you, Mr. Thien. Both sides, CID. Aye, Sergeant McLeod speaking. Uh, hold on. Morning, sir. Morning, Mac. Glad to see you. Something up? Aye, that Alhambra warehouse place was done overnight. Much taken? A couple of thousand pounds worth of colour tellies, according to the manager. Oh, they'll be easy enough to unload. That's what Inspector Moss said. Uh, he's in your room, sir. Right, Mac. Aye, McLeod here. Now, look. What's this warehouse job? Hello, Phil. Oh, morning, Colin. Like a colour telly, chief. Like I heard, I heard. Any leads? No, not yet. But still, I uh, thought we might get some benefit from it. Me? Herb Cullen. I had yeah. him picked up for questioning. Every cloud is a silver lining. Well, this one's more a brass neck. Well, we'll hold him for a couple of hours. Look, I want you to go and turn his place over. Legal or on the fly? Legal? Get a search warrant. I'm on my way. Thanks, Phil. Oh, damn. See ya. Uh, uh, bye, Phil. Yep. Oh, uh, thanks. Put him on, please. Morning, Jane. Morning, sir. Any uh, progress in the tallyman? A little, sir. A man called Cullen. He may be part of the hard help. Yeah, good. Well, keep at it. Uh, I just come from the chief constable. He's uh, 
heard how the judge felt about sentencing Fergus. So the pressure's on, sir. Well, let's say he's taking a strenuous interest, you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, good. Keep in touch, then. I'm relying on you. Thank you, sir. Too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Oh, well. Sir? Mac, uh, have Cullen brought up here. And come in first, will you? Yes, sir. Chief security officer. No, no, no. He said executive security officer. Oh, hell. I need some time to think. Sir? Uh, Mac, um, how did you make out of the pub last night? I got a few names, sir. People who were there uh, the night Laverick was shot. Some of them uh, haven't been back since. Now, they're the ones I'm interested in. I'll have them checked out, sir. By the back door. Try their wives or whatever. Can I take a policewoman, sir? Mac, you're fat, 50, and going bald. You look as respectable as a church elder. Marine Division had a church elder through on an indecency charge last week, sir. I don't trust women on their own. All right, take a policewoman. You know what to ask about? Money troubles. Laverick must have used that pub as a collection point for a few customers. Now, where's D.C. Beach? He's bringing Cullen from the cells. Well, I want him to check out a bank clerk, James Manison. He lives in Garrison Street, West Park. Tell him to do it discreetly. Beach discreet, sir? Well, he can try, can't he? Yes, sir. Uh, what's the link, sir? Well, Manison says he hurt his face in a fall. I say Cullen thumped him outside the Lombok Club last night. I saw Manison this morning, but I don't think he recognized me. Well, that'll be beach for Cullen, no, sir. Right, wheel him in. Sir? In you go. Move, Cullen. Help, Cullen, sir. Well, what's at this time? Routine inquiries will do. Where were you last night? Same place as you, the Lombok Club. And early this morning. Why? Where were you, Cullen? A friend's place. He had a party going. Anywhere near the Alhambra warehouse in King Street. Never heard of it. I see. What's your friend's name? Well, uh, uh, I just kind of met him casually. That's a pity. But I wasn't near any warehouse. Was he search beach? Yes, sir. He had about 60 quid in his wallet. Petty cash? Well, I might need bus fares. You got a job, Cullen? No, just casual deals. You know how it is. Uh, I have an idea. Hold him for now, B. Hey, uh, wait a minute. What, what's the charge? None yet, but I'll try and think of one of your desperates. This way, Cullen. The corpse. Yeah, it's no legal. Try it out your empty and then move. Sixty quid. Bus fares. <laughs> Who said crime doesn't pay? Get in, Phil. Uh, hello, Clark. Uh, thanks for coming out. You asked. Well, uh, that's Collins' flat over there, on the corner, two up. And what's so important you couldn't tell me on the phone? Uh, a few things. Uh, how about you? You're know, still trying to check on this hint that the tally man may have a sideline in burglary. Uh, oh, come on, Phil, let's have it. Well, I'd better get this over with. Collins' place. I found 400 quid in a shoebox and a Beretta automatic under a loose floorboard. I put the gun back after I jiggered the firing pin. The money? I left it too. But, um, well, I found a couple of telephone numbers in the back of an old envelope. Mm -hmm. You're not going to like this, but... Go on. I checked the numbers of the telephone people. One is the home of someone called Manison. James Manison, West Park. Right, but... I have got Beach checking on him now. The other... Your pal, Harry Freeman's home number. Harry Freeman? You sure? Positive. What's the time? Uh, about one o'clock. Harry usually goes home for lunch. Erickson. Sir? Head out towards Monk's Walk. I'll show you the way from there. Uh, right, sir. Um, are we in a hurry, sir? Uh, no. At least I'm not. Not for this one. Bookie business pays. Yes, but his old man sharpened knives from a barn. 
Colin. Hello, Harry. You've met Phil Moss. Yes, a couple of times. Right. Uh, come in and keep that damn cold out. Through here. Thanks. Now, uh, like a drink? Uh, not right now, Harry. Uh, no. Not for me. Oh. I like one before lunch. I was going to call you, but... Now, where's that? Uh, yeah. I heard a thing or two more. I'm curious. We've, um, heard a thing or two of our own, Harry. I don't like the way you said that, son, huh? Tell him, fool. We turned over to Herb Collins' place. He had a note of your home phone number. Cullen? Did he call you last night? Not last night or any other time. I'm going to get Lil. Lil! Coming! Let's see what she has to say. Hello, Colin. His name is Chief Inspector for the moment, Lil. Oh. Now, where were you last night? Here. Why? When did I get home? Oh, about uh, 1 a.m., I think, but... Did anyone phone after I got back? Last night? No. Or while I was out? Oh, Harry. Harry, I'm sorry. There was a call. Oh, I forgot. Was it important? So now she tells me. Who was it? He didn't give a name. Well, had you heard his voice before? No, I thought he might be one of Harry's punters. We get that sometimes. All right. Thanks, Lil. I'll take it from here. But... Uh, later. Well, all right. Uh, don't be too long. Lunch is ready. Well, Colin. Harry, I don't quite... If we were still kids, I'd land you one in the guts. What's the angle? That maybe I was on the Taliban's team? Let's forget it. No. I'd like to know why Colin was calling me. Maybe to tell you to keep your mouth shut. Why me? Cullen saw us together at the club. Cullen doesn't scare me. Uh, I've got the names you wanted. Blacklisted punters, Phil. I wrote them out. Yeah. yeah. Here. Thanks, Harry. Oh, and a bonus. Ever heard of the Housewife Special? The what? Housewife Special. It's a collection run. The housewives who've landed on the Taliban's book. Told to travel on a certain bus route, same time each week. The collector's aboard. A woman. Oh, neat. What's your route? I'm still asking that. Harry, no. You've been warned off. Oh, I can cope. Uh, are you in a rush now? No. Not desperately, I suppose. Then you've time for that drink? I think so. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure of it. Take it easy now, Erickson. D.C. Beach should be around here somewhere. Yeah, if he hasn't lost the way, Beach needs a guide dog. I think that's his car parked ahead, sir. Pull him behind it. All right, sir. Over here, Beach. Get in. Right, Inspector. Oh, hello, sir. Well, what's the score on the Manisons? I uh, did it in the old door-to-door -door consumer survey questions, then I got uh, it. We know you're brilliant. Well, the wife's name is Irene. She's a redhead, and they've got money worries, all right. Who says that? The butcher, the baker, and the neighbours. They had a washing machine repossessed last week, and before that, it was the lounge suite. Now, local gossip says it's the girl who spends the money. Manison earns bread, but she likes cake. Have you talked to her? Consumer survey style. Beach. Yes, I did. Then Manison came home for lunch. Answer it, Erickson. All right, sir. One five to control. Over. One five. Chief Inspector Thane, proceed to City Mortuary, rebody of Herbert Cullen. Message ends. Cullen? Oh, he'd only be let out of Millside about an hour ago. Received control. One five. Over. One Beach, five. take Inspector Moss Six back to Millside. Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, Phil, pick up Rab Hayes, the money lender. Huh? Well, I think he may be past the word to Cullen. Oh, no. Right, I'm with you. Hmm. Damn it, Beach, get out. Let me out, will you? Sorry. Right, call it. You know where we're going, Erickson? Yes, sir. To the mortuary. Back again, Colin? Sometimes I think I've got a season to this place, Doc. <laughs> well, here he is. The late Herbert Cullen. Hmm. He's a mess. Well, people usually are when they've been hit by an underground train. Is that what happened? 
Well, according to Central Division, who had him carted in. Mm. He fell off the platform at St. Enoch Underground. As a train came in. Kapow. Uh, Central says you're interested in him. We'd only just let him go. Oh, so? Did he fall or was he pushed? Uh-huh. Doc, there's a cellophone in this place. You're over in the corner. Help yourself. Ah, oh, thanks. Well, you'll get the Central Division report, but they've no witnesses that matter. People just saw him fall. And, and don't expect any miracles from me, Colin. No luck? No, it's a bookie's office. Well, he'll be closed. <laughs> you, you should read the sports pages, Colin. All racing's off today because of the weather. Yeah, well, I'm trying his home number now. Well, thanks, Doc. I'll be at Mill's side if you turn up anything. What, oh, with this one? Oh, you'll be lucky. Believe me, you'll be very lucky. Well, Collins no great loss to mankind, but why did he have to go and get himself killed in Central Division? Well, he'll keep us posted. Phil, I want Collins' flat gone over again. Really gone over. I'm ahead of you. It's been done. Scientific Bureau of the Law. Good. But I didn't get your mile under Hayes. He was out. Anyone waiting for him? Uh-huh. Still, maybe we've got something else that's new. Hmm? Sergeant McLeod. Sir? In here, will you? Right, Inspector Moss. What's, uh, what's Mac got? Ah, he'll tell you. Hmm. Get me Monk's Walk 2866, will you? Sir? I closed the door, Mac. It's a hell of a draft. Sorry. <clears throat> right, Colin. You told Mac to check out some names. Yes, regulars who vanished from the Turkish Raven after Laverick was shot, Well, One of them turned out to be interesting, sir. Oh. Patrick Lucas, married, no family. Works the storeman. He got around to admitting that he's in debt to the tallyman. He says Laverick was his original collector, then someone else took over. Who? A man named of Harris. Clock Harris. Remember, he was on that court photograph with Cullen. Back full circle. Well, I don't know. Finish it, Mac. Well, as this man Lucas tells the story... Originally, he was owing money all round, and a debt collecting agency was pressurizing him. Which agency? The barber people, sir. Thanks, Mac. Listen, where's Lucas now? Sweating out of home. I will leave him there. Yes, hello. Hello? Ah, Lil. It's Colin Thane. Oh. Is Harry there? No, and I've been out shopping. Any idea where he is? Harry is a heart specialist. He's been getting treatment from him, but, oh, well, he doesn't like people knowing. You know how Harry can be. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Listen, uh, have you got Milne's number? Hold on. Aye. Uh-huh. Yes, here it is. Mm-hmm. Milne's side, 4235. 4235. Thanks, Lil. I'll, I'll try there. Anything wrong? No, 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 no. I just want a word with Harry. Bye, Lil. Get me Millside 4235 and quickly. What's the problem? Well, there may not be one yet. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. Hello? Hello. Dr. Milne. Yes. Uh, Millside CID, Dr. Milne. Is Mr. Freeman still with you? No. He left a couple of hours ago. So, uh, well, uh, I don't quite know what to say. Why, Doctor? Well, his car's still parked outside my consulting room. He said he was coming back for it afterwards, but... Uh, uh, how do you mean, afterwards, Doctor? Well, he said something about going for a bus run. Uh, in fact, he hurried me through his appointment to be on time. Which bus, Doctor? The, um... The, yes, the 320 bus for Forsyth. It passes near here. Thanks, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, something wrong, Colin. How long from here to Forsyth and back by bus? Oh... 20 minutes each way, I suppose. Well, say an hour at most. Harry Freeman's been gone two hours. Mac. Sir? Mind the shop. I think Freeman's in trouble. (laughs) 
Well, there's the full side terminus. The middle of nowhere. Well, this damn snow's starting again. No sign of him. Erickson. Sir? You can help on this. We'll check through these trees and bushes. My left shoe's letting in. Oh, for God's sake, Phil. Oh, sorry, Colin. All right, Erickson, you heard. Yes, sir. Nothing over here, Colin. What about you, Erickson? No, nothing yet, sir. Well, that's my lot, Colin. Sir, over here. Right. I'm coming. Here, sir. Lying beside this bush. <coughs> it's him. What, what is it? Oh. Is he? Dead, Phil. No sign of a wound, but... Yes, he's... He's dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Colin. More courage than sense. Uh, that was always his trouble. Phil, I want a full turnout on this one. You'll get it. Well, let's put it this way. The reason I came here from headquarters is that we may be dealing with two murders committed by the same person, or persons unknown, within the space of one afternoon, correct? If either of them was murdered. Dark. Well, I just said it for the record. Yeah, noted. Phil, let's have the prelim report from the Scientific Bureau again. The one from the bus terminal area. All uh, right. Seems the snow helps in one way and hinders in others. There were car tracks and footprints beside the tracks. At least two men and certainly a woman. Same footprints, including the woman's beside the body. Yeah, it's a start. What about Cullen's flat? Uh, all they found there was that someone made it ahead of them. Money and an automatic pistol taken. We uh, knew they were there, sir. But we did fix the firing pin. Oh, so I had. Well, Central Division are trying for more witnesses to what happened at the underground station. Let's concentrate on Freeman for the moment. I was told he had a cardiac condition. That's right. But he kept quiet about it. Well, if a man with a cardiac condition goes wandering out in what's close to a blizzard, he's asking for trouble. He could drop dead. Natural cardiac failure. But, Doc, with what we know... Colin, it... my job is medical fact. Now, the only medical fact I can give you so far is that when you found him, he'd been dead about an hour. What about that uh, heart specialist fellow? Uh, Dr. Milne. Mm. We've tried to contact him again. He has a flat in town, but his real home is up north at Glen Craig. And he's on his way down now. 18 miles. You call it three hours in this weather. Yeah, well, I'll get the county people to see him. Uh, I'd rather do that myself, sir. I, uh, well, uh, I think it might be important. Well, haven't you enough on your plate? Well, nothing that's going to happen in a rush, sir. Well, and I can handle this end. Yeah. Well, in the special circumstances, all right. Thank you, sir. Uh, tell Milne I'd like Freeman's case notes, Colin. I will. Well, if there's nothing else, Doc, I'll give you a lift back to headquarters. Thanks. And, uh, yes, we'll have another conference uh, first thing tomorrow at headquarters. Good night, Thane. Boss. Good night, sir. Uh, Just remember, Colin, case notes. You'll get them. <coughs> well, that's over. When are you leaving to see Milne? The sooner the better. It's a long way and on these roads. Well, what's and... keeping you? Well, that bus conductor. Oh, and here's the moneylender. Look, it's time I had a share of the action. All right. Phone and tell Milne I'm on my way. I'll uh, take my own car. Driving will give me some time to think. And thanks, Phil. <laughs> Millside CID. Inspector Moss. Phil, is Colin around? Oh, hello, Mary. No, he's out. Oh, and he's liable to be late back. Because of what happened to Harry Freeman. Yeah, so you have. Mm, that's bad. For Colin, too. He's got enough in his mind already. Yeah, I've guessed that much. Mary, it's none of my business, but, uh, are you going after another job? Yes. Yeah. Or he's been offered one. A bank security post. I see. Phil, if he won't ask you, I will. 
For me? I don't know. That might work out for him. I'd take a bet you'd like it. Ah, too much a cop. Eh? Well, he's the one I'll have to do the deciding, that's for sure. Well, it won't be tonight. Thanks, Phil. Huh. And good night. All right, Mary. What the hell, working in a bank? <laughs> I don't know. Come in. Hey, sir. Ah, let's have him. You have, Mr. Hey. There's no need to push. Right, shut the door, Beach. Sir. Sure. Look, I want to know why you While you're here, I'll tell you. Harry Freeman's dead. The bookie. Hard luck. He was helping us. And when you warned the tally man, Chief Inspector Payne was asking questions, you put the finger in Freeman. Not me. I don't want anybody. You know I don't like you, Hayes. Beach! Sir! Outside. And keep that door shut. Hey, Hey, what's going on? I'll tell you. I'm tired. I'm an ulcer. And I, I haven't eaten since lunch. And we're all alone. Don't you try threatening me. Who's threatening me? Hey, take your hands off me. Oh, did I stand at your foot? Oh, now, how did that happen? <coughs> oh, sorry, Mr. Hayes. Who did you contact? I didn't. Try again. Well, you don't understand. Like I said, I don't like you, Mr. But Hayes. But if I hadn't tipped them off, they'd have... That's that... better. Who's the tally man? I don't know. I mean it. My contact's a woman. Oh, a woman again. What's her name? Janie. Janie Milton. That's what she calls herself. Oh, Milton, huh? The original Paradise Lost. Yeah? Oh, forget it. Just tell her, Ed. Well, I, I contact her through a telephone number. She, she came to me a few months ago with a proposition. I give them names of people I've turned down for loans and they pay me commission. You tipped her off last night? Yes. Describe her. Blonde, young, good looking. Nice legs, I suppose. Uh, Hayes, what else do you know? Nothing. Ever have a youngster called Jim Manison asking for a loan? Manison? No. Why? That's my business. Beach! Sir? Take this animal out and get a full statement. I'll leave that door open. For the smell in here. Come on in, Finn. We wondered if you'd make it. Barber. I didn't expect you. I, I can see that. Well, how are the roads? Bad. Uh, the last stretch through the hills is rough, all right. Uh, take your coat off. Dr. Milne got your message. He's expecting you. When did you get here? Just before your inspector phoned. I brought Helen up, Milne's daughter. She was worried about driving on her own. You uh, you met her at the Lombok Club, remember? Yes, of course. I suppose you know why I've come. Aye, Harry Freeman. Uh, very sad. Of course, he had a bad heart. Just one of those things, isn't it? So, uh, why the journey? When you get a sudden death out of doors, well, sometimes there can be red tape inquiries. Mm. But if Dr. Milne certifies the medical background... You can cut the red tape. Exactly. Oh, uh, in here, Chief Inspector. Thanks. Oh, good evening, Chief Inspector. Uh, You've come a long way, and on a devil of a night. Well, that fire looks good. Warm yourself, man. And you'll have a dram. Uh... You know my daughter. Hello, Chief Inspector. Miss Milne. Get the man a whiskey, girl. Water, Chief Inspector. No, thanks, not this time. Water? A heathen notion. <laughs> sorry you missed me in town. And I'm sorry about Freeman. I liked him. Most people did. Your drink, Chief Inspector. Thanks. <laughs> Your health. Seems he's uh, come all this way to get mm. a piece of paper signed or something. Yeah, what difference does it make where Freeman died if it was a heart attack? Well, there's always form filling. I'll be happy to do the usual. It shouldn't take long. We'll go through to the gun room, I think. Uh, then I'll say goodbye. Well, those roads, even if I leave now, I won't make the city before midnight. Oh, say if you want. There's a spare room. Uh, no, thanks. I've too much work to clear if I'm going to take time off to come deer shooting with you. The term is stalking. And we're after hinds, not stags. Not that I expect you to know the difference. The main thing is, Josh, you'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow evening. All ready for an early start. Yes. Well, then, let's go and get this business done. And uh, I'll say good night. Good night, Mr. Barber. Remember, watch those damn roads. I will. Don't worry about me. Huh. In here, Chief Inspector. Thanks. I don't know. Got a family thing. Cool age. Then you've plenty ahead of you. 
Well, looky in my armory. Huh? Some nice guns there. A oh, few. Now, what's all this nonsense about driving up to get a medical certificate? You've played along with it, thanks. Because you seem to want it that way. Well? Tell me Freeman's medical history. Well, simple enough. Fairly common cardiac condition. Mm -hmm. I've been treating him about a year, mostly drug therapy, and treating him to lead a quieter life. Now, how serious was it? Myocardial degenerative changes. Oh. I'd have said he'd no need to worry if he followed my rules and avoided any major emotional strain. Why do you want to know? We think he was murdered. I see. There's no outward sign of physical violence. Well, his blood pressure was up several points this afternoon. He was in an obvious state of tension. Doctor... Let me finish, then. You will say he died in the open. Mm hmm in this weather, in this condition, even a small emotional upset could have killed him. You mean... I the... mean you've probably come a long way for very little. I know the people he was up against, Doctor. Now, suppose they knew he had a bad heart. And played on it to me. Well, except he didn't tell anyone about his heart. Did you, Dr. Mill? Now, look here. Look, they... I'm sorry, Doctor, but I'm still asking. It would be totally unethical to discuss a patient with other people. It could be done innocently. Well, yes, I suppose so. Could it have happened? <sighs> I'm a widower. And I'm very proud of my daughter. But daughters can pose problems, especially when they meet strangers. Don't spell it out, Thane. I need time to think. How would I contact your police sergeant? Uh, through police headquarters in Glasgow. Hmm. There is a way Freeman might have died. Mm -hmm. Vagal inhibition. What's that? The vagus nerves extend to the heart. Uh, look, I'm not There's sure a little that... story which explains it best. Not quite 200 years ago, a man, Downey, was janitor at Aberdeen University. He was a sneak, an arc, and the students decided to teach him a lesson. They held a mock trial and condemned him to death. Nice people, students. Mm -hmm. Downey was blindfolded and dragged to an execution block in a state of terror. They bared his neck, forced his head down, and the student flicked him on the back of the neck with a wet towel. They only meant to scare him, they. But Downey died. That's vagal inhibition. Shock that causes the heart to stop. Mm -hmm. Would it show in a post-mortem? It might, if you knew what to look for. Otherwise, cardiac inhibition, plain, ordinary heart failure. Doctor, did you discuss Freeman's death with anyone before I arrived? Anyone? Barber, then. No. But he knew about the telephone message, and I'm a heart man. Could he have known about Freeman's condition before tonight? Well, he might have seen Freeman at my surgery. He meets Helen there sometimes. Or maybe Helen told him. Helen knows my patient. Could Barbara know about uh, vagal inhibition? That's why it's on my mind, Thane. I made a joke about it a few weeks back. Helen had dumped ice in my drink. And you explained it in detail? The expert showing off, yes, I did. Well, what happens now? Nothing till we know more. Doctor, don't tell your daughter about this. And act normally when Barbara arrives back tomorrow. Normally, with him, is one stage short of open to snack. I'll manage that. Well, I'd better start back now. Back? You'll eat first. Oh, well, I uh... insist coffee and sandwiches at least. Well, I could use them. Right. Hello. Yes, sir. Coming. And afterwards, watch those roads, Thane. It's tricky through the hills. I'll be careful. I'm driving my own car. Mill wasn't joking. This room is like a skating rink. And single track. <laughs> Damn! That wasn't clever. Now, just you take it easy around this next bend. Easy. Hell, hell those lights! I can't see! Kevin, you're all right, Colin. Mm. But mm. you say it happened last night. Where have you... Where have I been since then? Mm. <laughs> Stuck halfway down a slope with a car jammed against a oh. tree. Then when I did manage to get out... But what about the other car? Oh, long gone. 
He'd been waiting there for me. Then uh, slam, headlamp, spot lamps, the lot. Oh, he could have killed you. I got that feeling, too. Morning, Mary. Phil, I didn't know you were here. I brought him over. Oh. Anyway, all I got was this bump on my head. Then I walked and walked. A uh, newspaper truck gave me a lift. I contacted the county police and then Phil. Here I am. What about the car? Uh, the kind of police said they'd have it hauled in. Uh, Colin. Hmm? Look, you at headquarters. Oh, for heaven's sake, Phil. 8 a.m. Buddha Elford said. Come in. Morning, sir. Uh, uh, Doc Williams beat you to it. Yeah, only just. Morning. Doc. Uh, sit down, both of you. Feeling all right, Thane? Uh, reasonable, sir. Oh, you sound like Moss at his best. Yeah, well, let's get started. I call this meeting because uh, I want to get a clear perspective on all of this. And there are several points of detail needing tidied up. Payne, I understand you can't be positive who sent you off that road last night. No, I can make a damn good guess, sir. Uh, Josh Barber, of course. Hmm. Unfortunately, we don't deal in guesswork. On the other hand, dear, you were interested in the man Truck Harris... And a woman named Janie Milton. Uh, Harris was a friend of Collins. Mm. Janie Milton is the name we have as a tallyman collector. Uh, Janie Milton's real enough. She uh, is currently living with Harris. Uh, and a woman's footprints were found beside Harry Freeman's body. A woman and two men. Mm. The uh, tire tracks, sir. Uh, inconclusive. Doc, your turn. Uh, Collins case, hopeless. Multiple injuries. Very multiple. End. And no witnesses. Ah, that's the way it goes in a crowd at a station. But Freeman's different, thanks to Dr. Milne. He contacted you. Mm-hmm. Phoned at 1 a.m. and lectured me. He said vagal inhibition. Well, he developed that. Mechanical intervention at the main arteries of the neck. Uh, finger and thumb grip just here at the front. If you like, I'll... I'll take your word on it. Oh, just a prod. But thanks to Milne, I found very slight bruising on the deep muscles of Freeman's neck. I see. Freeman wouldn't have known a thing, Colin. Uh, I've read your reports, then. Uh, this bank clerk... Uh, Manison, sir. Uh, Manison. I know we're talking about two murders, but he worries me. If Freeman was right and the tally man sometimes settles a debt for inside help... Then we could have a bank raid on the car. Yeah, well, I'd like to know more about security inside that damn bank. Oh, I think we've got that, sir. Right, Colin. Eh? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, they're pretty good. Old-fashioned, but good. No, even so, I don't like taking chances. Perhaps we should give them a hint. Ah, but uh, this could be a chance to bring the Tanneman out in the open, sir. Hmm? Uh, well, yes, uh, this one's our back your way, Thane. Uh, but I think you should lean a little on this bank now. That's on the program, sir. He goes home for lunch. Now, we'll be there just ahead of him. Last flight, Phil. Sometimes I think everybody in the world lives on a top floor. Phil, there's uh, something I've been meaning to ask since this morning. You made a crack back at headquarters. How ah, about you in the bank? Mm. Ah, Mary told me what's going on. Ah, well, I was going to. Uh... Ah, in your own sweet time, eh? You made up your mind yet? I think so. You in a bank. It'd <laughs> be better with a performing bear. <laughs> oh, hi, well, here we are. J. Manus and I. Try the bell. All right. The men in watch say she hasn't been out all morning. They'd better be right. Oh, and they know it. Yes? Mrs. Manison. That's right. Police, Mrs. Manison. Millside CID. Police? Mind if we come in? No. I mean, yes. Thanks. In here. Well, uh, there isn't much furniture, I'm afraid, but... We're waiting for a new suite and that's... The last one was taken away because you couldn't give up the payments, Mrs. Madison. Now, look here. Oh, Mrs. Madison, don't waste your energy, we know. Even if you're right, what's it got to do with you? Maybe quite a lot. We haven't done anything wrong. We'll pay what we owe. But uh, bank clerks aren't particularly well paid. And banks don't like their staff getting into debt. Jim says everything will be all right soon. He's doing extra work for someone. Mrs. Madison, ever heard of the tally man... No, why? How about the Barber Debt Collecting Agency? They 
They've been here, yes. Mrs. Madison, take a look at these photographs. Do you recognize any of these people? I don't know. Oh, yes. The woman, that's Miss Milton. She, she loans money. She loans something to you? Yes. She came to the door one day and she... How said, much, Mrs. Madison? Why should I tell you? Because you want to keep your husband out of trouble. I've borrowed a hundred pounds from her. Mm -hmm. Did your husband approve? Oh, no. He was angry, but he's paying it back. And money? Oh, well, of course. But that, that'll be Jim home for lunch. He, he's always forgetting his key. Go and let him in. All right. Hmm. Same old story. Uh -huh. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, Jim, is that the police? He's getting the message all right. Well, let's hope it softens him up. Oh, hell, I feel sorry for him. Can't be helped, Phil. Here he comes. You want to see me? Yes, Mr. Madison. Remember me? I, uh... Yes. Yes, you were uh, with Mr. Dial at the bank. That's right. Irene said uh, police. Uh, that's right, too. Mrs. Madison, I want to talk to your husband alone. Oh, no, I want to stay. That's all right, Irene. Do what he says. Well, I... We'll see if your meal's ready. Ah, you do that. I I'll be in the kitchen. Sit down, Mr. Madison. Now, look. I don't like coming home and finding my wife half scared out of her wit. I said, sit down. Good. Now, just take a look at these photographs. I don't know what you mean. Oh, don't make it difficult, laddie. Madison, when do they raid the bank? You're joking. Look, I don't joke when two people have been murdered. We've got most of this bunch tagged, Madison, including Josh Barber. Who's he? If you don't know him, how about Janie Milton or Truck Harris? I've... We know the Taliban has his hooks in you, Madison. Look, don't you remember me another time in that alley after Herb Cullen roughed you up? That was you? Yes. And Cullen's dead now. Do they know at the bank? I mean, was that why you were there? Well, there was another reason. But you don't understand. No, maybe we do. How long have you had the Taliban on your back, Madison? All right. Five months. Things had gone wrong. I should have kept us in a budget. It happens. Too much weak at the end of the money. They said Irene would get acid in her face. Now, look, she doesn't You'll know... You'll both get protection. We won't take chances. You've been helping them, right? Yes. When does it happen? You picked your time. It's tonight. They've got keys to the main door of the bank and the basement area. I, well, my job is to knock out the alarm system before I leave this evening. Just like that? Oh, it's easy enough. It, they give me a little thing like a clock. I clip it on and it kills the alarm system. Or it will between 11 and 1 a.m. So, they're trying for the strong room. No. Well, that's why it has to be tonight. Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, uh, you tell it, Manus. Every Scottish bank issues its own banknotes. Yeah. Well, banknotes wear out, but they get torn, or dirty, or damaged. The branches withdraw them and send them back to the head office. And whatever is collected is destroyed once every oh, three months. Yeah. Who does it? The top management, Mr. Dial. He has dinner in the bank, then starts burning the money about 11. Oh, sounds like an orgy. Well, I wouldn't know. But, well, the tally man had heard about it. How much old money will they burn tonight? It's only a guess. Three hundred, maybe four hundred thousand. Great. They need more than the alarm system knocked out. Those doors, they... Oh, they've already done it twice. It's sort of rehearsals. I got impressions of the keys made from <laughs> You've been busy, laddie. But I hadn't much choice. They took me along the first time they went in, about a month ago. From the front door into the basement took one minute, 28 seconds. They timed it. That's not a night watchman. Well, he uses a room up on the top floor and sleeps most of the time. Do you mind telling me where you fit in tonight, apart from fixing the alarm system? I have to stay home. They say... Well, they said I just wouldn't hear from them again. Well, you'd better do what they told you all the way. What? Look, just do it. Fix the alarm system. But what about afterwards? You're a crown witness. But I'll be finished with the bank. You can't have it always. No, I can't. You and your wife will have protection. Don't worry about that. I have your phone. Yes. 
It doesn't get cut off until next week. Phil, call headquarters and tell Buddha Ilford to score. Oh, he's going to love it. Madison? Yes? We've just played our way, and it won't be too bad. Have I any choice? None, laddie. Now, where's that for? Time that 21 15 hours. Look out requested for a light blue solution. You have to listen to that. Switch it off, Phil. All right. Some time since I spent the night just sitting in a divisional office. Waiting isn't my strong point. 21 15, quarter past nine. And all's well. So far. Mac? Sir? We could use some tea in here. Right, sir. For three. Oh, how does Mr. Elford like his? Uh, no milk. I'm on a diet. Uh, three sugars. I had to. Damn doctor says I've got to lose weight. Ah, they're all the same. The last one I saw about my ulcer. Yeah, another time, Moss, if you don't mind. Thane, sir. Uh, the checklist. Barber left town... 6.30, sir. Last report we had placed him almost at Glen Craig. It's still snowing up there. Yeah, well, he won't be in our little party, eh? He keeps his nose clean all right. Mm. Madison and his wife are at home. Now, the two plainclothes men holding their hands. Uh, damn young fools. And the last report we had on Truck Harris and the Milton woman had them drinking in a pub, right? We'll have to move soon. With these other reports, sir, they tie in Harris and Janie Milton. Yeah, I'm thinking of the bank. It's time we told them. And they're not going to be very happy. I'll get them now. Bank of Central Scotland, head office, please. Come in. Gee, sir. I uh, just put them down, Mac. All right, sir. Uh, that's all, Mac. Sir. Yes, time we contacted the bank. A fellow uh, Dial is the general manager. Ah, uh, we know him, sir. Don't we, Colin? Yes. Hmm? I'll be prepared. The Boy Scout motto. Oh, well. Now, where's my tea? <clears throat> Hello? Bank of Central Scotland. Mr. Dial, it's Chief Inspector Thane, Millside CID. Ah, Thane, uh, I want to ask you how you knew I'd be here. Uh, initiative, eh? Uh, something I can help you with? It's an official call, Mr. Dial. Oh. We have information an attempt will be made to raid the bank tonight, between 11 and 1, while you're destroying the old bank notes. Well, we're... Thane, is this some kind of joke? No, I wish it was. Excellent, excellent, Thane. But now you'll nip the whole thing in the bud, eh? No, sir. We want to nail them inside the bank. Now, that means a little cooperation on your part, Mr. Dial. Cooperation? Then you're on the brink of becoming an officer of this bank. I, I forbid any action which could affect public confidence. Mr. Dial, we've got to get them inside the bank, or we haven't enough evidence. Then, how long have you known about this? We've been working on it. And you've deliberately avoided warning us. It's going to require considerable explanation. Are you going to help or not, Mr. Dial? I don't appear to have any option, do I? But I won't forget this, believe me. All men in position, Sergeant? All set, sir. Yeah, good. Now, yeah, Mr. Dial, I think you can relax. If anything does go wrong... It won't. With men placed all through the bank, other men outside, nothing can go wrong. I've heard that said before. What do I do now? I'll just keep on as usual. These the, uh, the bank notes? Yes, all right, Stoddard. Feed some bundles into the shredder. Starting now, Mr. Dial. Bundles one to twelve. Oh, Spots the stuff out like so much mince, eh? <laughs> now what? We burn it. Oh. In it goes. <clears throat> Close the door, Stoddard. Bundles thirteen to twenty-four, sir. Thane, sir. This is yours. I don't like guns, but they could be armed. How many of us will have guns? Well, you and I and two men upstairs. Uh, uh, who's on the radio link to the car outside? Beach, sir. Beach! All set? On standby, sir. Nothing yet. Yeah, when it happens, it won't take long. Inspector Moss didn't seem pleased at missing this. And that's an understatement, sir. Yeah, well, he's got his own task. I want Barber's office taken apart. Sir. Well? Car arriving, sir. Just a moment. Stop at the door. Four man plus driver's seat. 
back door being open now. My God, if anything goes wrong... I'll just keep heating the furnace, sir. The rest of you, get out of sight. Bundle 61 to 72, Mr. Dyer. Mr. Dyer? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, start the machine. No, I, for uh, that. <laughs> uh, Just hold it down there. Rob, watch your store and we'll do the rest. But, uh, now you over yeah. there. See the shotgun? Yes. Well, it says behave and nobody gets hurt. Uh, now, I tell you, back away from that money. Uh, All right, lads, come on, start gathering. Police, drop that shotgun. What the hell's going on? Where are you, Harris? Where are you, damn you? Pack it in, Harris. Drop, drop. Harris, drop that gun. Last warning. Drop. All right, damn you. Sergeant, get them all against that wall. All of them. Right, sir. Go on, you little bunch of nits. <laughs> you, uh, you all right, Mr. Dial? I, uh, uh, yes, I think so. Uh, my clerk. Uh, just, just frighten, Mr. Dial. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I have to talk to the chief constable about commendations for you both. That's, uh, that's very kind. Uh, public spirited action. Uh, all right, Sergeant. Uh, let's get those stocking masks off and see who we've got. You first, lady. Thane. Oh. Yes, Mr. Dial. Perhaps you were right after all. My board believes in public spirited action. And commendations. Oh, well, uh, anyway, I, I look forward to hearing your answer tomorrow. You understand? If I spoke harshly, I... Oh, that's I... all right. Eh? Coming, sir. Well, they, uh, they look better in handcuffs, eh? Truck Harris and Jenny Milton, right? Get lost, copper. Manners. At least you'd sense enough to drop that gun, Harris. Ah, why, black a loser. Oh, if you'd had more guns... I'll me... belt up, Jenny. That's good advice. Now, this one now. Sandy Lang, isn't it? Aye. And I know you. Well, uh, then a gentleman who says his name is Smith. And they're bringing the driver in from outside. Sergeant? Sir? We'll, uh, we'll keep Harris and the uh, lady. Take charge of the rest. Right, sir. Beach. Stop moving. Yeah, yeah. That's oh. why I call it. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. No, thanks. You walked into this one, didn't you, Harris? Yeah. Enjoy your drink with Janie in the pub tonight? Who told you this was old copper? Or maybe it was Cullen. He wouldn't grasp. Then why did the tally man have him killed? Who's the tally man? You've been collecting for him. Both of you. Well, we can prove it. We can prove other things. You two killed Harry Freeman. Us? Hey, no, we're... While you were there, was it Josh Barber who did it? While you watched? Who is Josh Barber? The woman, you sound like a gramophone record. We know all about Barber. Of course, Barber may tell his own kind of story. Well... Well, Janie and me didn't kill anyone. Out to Jack. hell, Janie. You and me? Well, I'm not carrying any cans for Barber. Oh, suit yourself. I've had it. Well? Barber did for Colin at that underground. He said the cops were too interested in him. And Harry Freeman? Aye, we were there. But it was Barber who killed him. How? Oh, some fancy yes. throat trick. Yes, hold on. The truck's right. It wasn't us. Chief Inspector Payne, call for you. Yeah, take it, Payne. Mm. Well, you people know what happens now. Charge and caution, statements. I won't try changing your mind. Uh, here's the phone, Payne. It's Inspector Moss. Thanks. Phil? How'd it go? Oh, smooth. And they're talking. Uh, well, we've got Bob on this end. We found a loose floorboard beside his desk. Mm. The same trick as at Cullen's place. Ledgers. Names, all his Taliban account books. Bring them to headquarters, Phil. We'll get the whole mess in order there. And what about Barber? Ever seen the dawn break over the highlands in winter, Phil? Oh, I should have guessed that. Well, I can't push it any faster than this, sir. Not in these roads. I know. How long now? Oh, a mile or so, I reckon. Well, there is dawn breaking. You can keep it. I'd call it great desolation. There should be a turn-off coming up. You mean with that car's weak? Looks like a county car, sir. You're right. There's someone waving us down. Pull in beside them. Yes, sir.
Wind down the window, Phil. He's coming over. Well, I'm I say. Oh, all right. Chief Inspector Thane. Yes? Inspector McFarren, County Police. You've made good time. We've a good driver. Aye, but you're still too late. They've gone from the house. When? Twenty minutes ago. We weren't supposed to leave until after dawn. Ah, but I know the doctor. He's a hell of a man for the deer, and our orders are to do nothing till you came. I know. Did they see your car? Not a chance. It was well hidden. And I know where the deer shoot is. Eagle Lockway. And from here? Into the hill, sir. If your man gets up there. Well, you can whistle for him. All right, McFarren. You lead the way. I'll do that, sir. But stay close and be careful. It's a hell of a road. You heard what the man said, Erickson. Be careful, sir. Down there, Chief Inspector, that's Eagle Lock. It may look just like a skating rink, but it's always thin ice and it's damn near bottomless. And over there's where the folk are gathered. Look, you can see the cars. We'll walk down, Inspector Moth and I first. Keep your men back and let us trouble. If Barbara sees us too soon, he's liable to bolt. We'll be ready if you need us. Phil? All right. Damn the snow. It's getting in over my shoes again. Easy now. Nobody seems to have seen us yet. There's Dr. Milne. Ah, oh, but no barber. Doctor! Thane! I, I wondered... Where's Barbara, Doctor? With Helen. They're over at our Land Rover. No. Damn, they're coming this way. They've seen us. And he's on to us. That's near enough, Thane. Stay still, all of you. You too, Helen, I mean it. My God, he's got a gun. Don't try it, Barbara. Put that damn thing down. Me. I'm leaving. Helen comes to understand. George. Shut up and do what I tell you. The doctor. I want the Land Rover keys. Throw them over. You can have them, but if anything happens to Helen... Hold on, doctor. That gun calling. Are you right? Barbara! It's not on. I'm warning you. Zane, for pity's it's sake. all right, doctor. That's a barrette he's got. And we know where it came from. Barbara, you got that gun from Cullen's place, didn't you? What if I did... Well, it's just that we fixed the firing pin and we searched Cullen's place before he was killed. Try it! Damn you! You still won't get me! He's running! He's heading for the loch! He'll get away across the ice! Wait, boss! That's Eagle Loch! Thin ice and damn near bottomless, and we can't stop him. I could. With my rifle, I'll get it. No, no, Doctor! But Colin! The ice fell! He's right, Moss. The ice won't bear him once he's any distance out. That's the way with Eagle Loch. Oh, can't we do anything? No. Except wait. He's down. He's through it. No, sir, stay. It's not on. Please, help me. Help me. I'm sorry, sir. We'll find him in the spring. I'm damned if I'm letting anyone else risk his neck. Well, of course it was bad luck. Well, we've got the rest of them, Thane. And the tally man's finished. That should keep Lord Maines happy. Yeah. Get him off our backs, anyway. Well, Thane, there's, uh, there's something else. Sir? Well, I talked to Patterson Dial. He uh, let it slip the bank has made you an offer. I planned to tell you as soon as I decided, sir. Mm. Good divisional officers like you don't grow on trees. But I, uh, I wouldn't like to say what I'd do. You made up your mind? I'm seeing him today, sir. Yeah, he told me. Are you taking it? Oh, no. Uh, no, sir. Not now. Oh. Well, what about your wife? Well, I think she knows already. Uh, women usually do, they. Hmm. Where's Moss? Outside, sir. Well, I'll buy you a drink, both of you. You've had a narrow escape thing. Just remember, you're a cop, and you're stuck with that. Absolutely stuck. That was The Tallyman by Bill Knox. The part of Chief Inspector Thane was played by Paul Kermack, Inspector Moss by Phil McCall, Lord Maines by David Stewart, Superintendent Ilford by Martin Cochran, Police Constable Beach, Tony Roper, Sergeant McLeod, Willie Joss, Mary Thane, Gwyneth Guthrie, Driver Erickson, Michael Bruce, 
Hayes, Ian Dewar. Harry Freeman, Arthur Boland. Josh Barber, Robert Trotter. Helen Milne, Anne Scott Jones. Jim Manison, William Armour. Patterson Dial, John Young. Mrs. Freeman, Sheila Donald. Doc Williams, Michael Elder. Dr. Milne, Bryden Murdoch. Irene Manison, Rose McBain. And the producer was Gordon Emsley.